I don't want to do that now. Push it. No, you just put on power. No, you didn't. Yes, you did. No, it's, it's not. Did it say standby? No. Then you're on power. I gotta go back. Hello, and welcome to another rousing evening on A&E. Tonight, we will be showing a documentary on the, on the legendary revolutionary Emiliano Zapata. During the Mexican Revolution of 1910, Zapata, the son of a poor mestizo, controlled an army of poor Native American men that by 1914 would number 25,000. He fought for the peasants and was a courageous and brave individual. His story begins now. Emiliano Zapata was born in 1879 in this small wooden house in San Miguel Arenquilo. He was born into a poor mestizo family and at the age of 17 he was orphaned and he had to look after his brothers and sisters. The fact that he was able to look after his brothers and sister, sisters and his entire family under his circumstances was a foreshadowing for what was to come. His resilience and coverage were obviously there from his early years. Even before the 1900 Mexican Revolution, Zapata, then nothing more than a political agitator, had begun to form a small army. By 1910, however, his forces had numbered 5,000 loyal men. Together, they marched and captured Cuernacala, capital of the state of Morelos. Mi amo es... Hola. Mi amo es Diaz Rodriguez. Es por favor. Mi voy a... My name is Diaz Rodriguez. And I served in the army of the great Zapata during the revolution. What? That first march made us all believe Zapata was our father and we were all willing to die for him. After declaring the new president, Madero, incapable of fulfilling the goals of the revolution in 1911, Zapata proposed his famous Plan of Ayala. The plan renewed the revolution and promised to appoint a provincial president until there could be elections. It also vowed to return stolen lands to Eidos, which was the former Indian communal system of land ownership, by expropriating a third of the area of the hacienda. It is here that Zapata adopted his fighting cry, Tierra y Libertad, Land and Liberty. Emiliano Zapata. The lands, forests, and water that have been unsurped would be immediately restored to the villages or citizens who have title to them. Because the great majority of Mexicans own nothing more than the land they walk on. One third of these properties will be expropriated so that the villages and citizens of Mexico may obtain a Udos, sites for towns and fields. Tierra y Libertad! Hi, my name is Pablo Domingo, and I was a good friend of the late Zapata. He was so passionate about his goal that he often burned haciendas without compensation, offered executions, and his guerrillas were unconcerned with the laws of war. However, underneath his drooping mustache, cold eyes, and big sombrero was a passionate man with simple ideals that all he was trying to do was put into practice. In 1913, after the assassination of Madero, Zapata and the, Zapata, and the Zapatistas, as his, follow, as his followers were known, left, let Mexico know that they were against General, General Huerta, the new president of Mexico. Thus, there existed the Carranzistas in the north under the leadership of Venustiano Carranza and the Zapatistas and Wilistas under Pancho Villa in the south. War broke out in 1914 between the Carrancistas and, and the Conventionalists. Zapata's and Huila's forces became known. Zapata's army, which now numbered 25,000 men, marched on Mexico City and proved no match and proved that Carranza's forces were no match for his strong army. Pancho Villa and Zapata met and celebrated in Mexico City. Over the next few years, Zapata tried to redistribute the lands of the haciendas, 
However, Carranza's forces reorganized and defeated Villa and isolated Zapata. Thus, two zones were formed, the Zapata-controlled zone and the constitutional zone. A U.S. envoy, William Gates, summed it up best. The true social revolution can be found among the Zapatistas. He is truly a great orator and leader. William, G William Gates, a newspaper reporter, a series of articles praising Zapata in the U.S. When Zapata heard of these articles, he was quoted as saying, Now I can die. Now I can rest in peace. Finally, they have done me justice. Sure enough, within the next month, Zapata was shot and killed by an agent of Carranza. The life of a great revolutionary came to an abrupt and sudden end. Not yet. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that beautiful documentary. And now, this is a little, a summary of the contemporary movement of Zapatista. Zapata's memory rides on in Mexico. His name has been invoked by the indigenous rebel army in Chiapas, the Zapatista Army of National Liberation, in their struggle against exactly the same social ills as Zapata fought against. Large landlords and often foreign-owned big businesses running a corrupt and repressive regime that leaves the peasants, particularly indigenous people, landless and exploited, Throughout this century, people all over the world have risen up against oppression, taking from heart Zapata's cry. It is better to die on your feet than to live on your knees. Thank you, and have a great evening.